I like to see myself as a product minded and product focused engineer. Um, I can go the full stack, me personally. So whether it, whether I have to make like actual UI UX design decisions, or whether I have to go as far back as deploy something with Linux and AWS, like I've done all these things and I've been all around the product, smart contracts, Go, React, all sorts of things. Obviously, I'm not a master or a specialist in any one of these things. But I think I've developed over the past five years, I've been developing software. I've developed a philosophy of my own in terms of developing software, which is very product focused. And I think you should develop a philosophy of your own when developing software as well. And you might agree with my philosophy or not. Maybe you might take some parts of what I'm about to say, but there has to be some sort of a culture, a philosophy, a and a way of doing things when you establish a theme or even when you develop on your own whatever software you might make. As I said, me personally, I'm very product focused. The end goal, the whole reason why you code at all ever is to build a product. And now that product could be potentially a library, which means it's a product aimed at other engineers who will use it to build other products, other software. That software may be B2C, maybe B2B, it might be in crypto, it might be in AI, it might be like, there's all sorts of paradigms, mobile apps versus web dev, etc. Ultimately, you're building a product, you're building something that somebody will use to some sort of degree, and they will derive value from it. And that's the core point I start from. How do I make a product that is more useful and more valuable to whoever I will send it to and ship it to and build it for. With that in mind, there's a few key concepts which I adhere to in helping that end goal. One of them is small scope. I've learned in my career that if you just think of the million things you could build, one, you now have an elephant to eat, which is very hard to eat. You don't know where to start. It's, it just makes life harder. But two is, is as you start to build it, there's a lot of unknown unknowns. That's just the way software is. You can't plan ahead for everything or you can try to, but then you're stuck in paralysis by analysis, as I've seen. <coughs> and it just ends up being a very slow and very complex way of building and you end up either shipping nothing after a year of work or you end up having to cut something because you're you know way beyond the deadline way beyond the budget and, and it's just bad and sometimes you end up realizing oh wow this whole thing like this whole product idea even was not even worth it it was not worth the amount of work. Now, if you would have cut scope initially, if you would have started with like a very, very small scope, a very small amount of features, a very small amount of objectives in what you have would have built, then what happens is you taking this more of a proof of concept and MVP approach, you build something that has actually some sort of value. So now you can test it against its users and see if actually there is a value there, which is very powerful because you don't want to build something that has no value to your users. The second thing is you start to find some of the unknown unknowns. When you, when you write a design doc, you, you, you don't know what you don't know. When you write code and you actually put it out there and you use it or you have people use it, now you find out like about those unknown unknowns. And this is ultimately very powerful because it allows you to figure out, you know, okay, what do I have to do next to make this thing better? And so you build a small scope, a small version, a small project, small part of the product, you build it well, you ship it out, you see what happens, and then you take it from there and you do the next part. And you, you see again what happens and you do the next part. So I like to call that, you know, cutting scope and shipping small and iteratively. That's, uh, uh, in my opinion, a good way to go about building software uh, because of the reasons I outlined earlier. Another important part, in my opinion, um, is to keep it pushing, right? 
don't get stuck on nits on like nitpicking it doesn't really matter if somebody named this particular function with a slightly different convention it doesn't really matter if you squashed the pr and the pr itself didn't have the best get hygiene you squashed it anyway and like like what i'm trying to say is there's that analogy about bike shedding things you can google it but the point is don't focus on the small stuff because ultimately it doesn't really matter if the goal is to ship and build products it can matter sometimes details do matter sometimes i'm not saying throw all details out the window i'm just saying you know focus on the big parts first and we can iron out the kinks and the small things later as we go through the process of building that's my two cents that's my philosophy take what you can from it remove what you don't like and build up your own